Hello and welcome to this special broadcast here from the NDTV studio in Davos. AI and tech have taken center stage here at the World Economic Forum. And when we're talking so much about this AI revolution and how does it manifest in terms of whether we see humanoid robots walking the streets of Davos, maybe not, but we have a very special guest, Deepak Pathak of Skilled AI joins us here. Deepak, what a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome, Deepak. You know, I, I really want to understand a little bit more about how, when we talk about robots, it conjures images of what Elon's doing with humanoid robots and whatnot. But what you're doing at Skilled AI is, is very unique and largely from a hardware and a software standpoint, yeah. it's pretty impressive. It's impressive enough to the point where, congratulations, by the way, on your recent round of funding. Thank you so much. Companies valued at nearly $14 billion, uh, a massive round at nearly $1.4 billion yep. last week. Jensen's on board, Jeff Bezos is on board. What's the secret sauce? What is it that you're doing at Skilled AI that's really capturing the imagination of the big tech seven? So at Skilled AI, what we are doing is we are building brain for robots. Now it's very different uh, and if you think deeply about what it means, mm -hmm. because when you think of robot in your mind, as you mentioned in the beginning, what the picture comes in your mind is of a hardware. Maybe the Hollywood's most famous robot out there or, or Bollywood's, but it's always the hardware. And if you look at robotics literature, like uh, AI began in the context of robotics, you will find so many demos of robots for the last 70 years. Now, not one year, two year, five years, seven years, 70 years, you have to understand. 70 years is tech, is basically the whole history of tech. 70 years ago, there was literally no tech. Technology world was uh, just yeah. a beginning. Yeah. And, but still no robots around us. Even at Davos here, no robots around you, or even at, go to grocery stores. Because the robot brain has been missing. And that is what we build. What we are, our motto is, any robot, any task, one brain. So we are building this general model, you can put on any hardware, yeah. humanoid, quadruped, any task, indoor, outdoor, one brain, which should power this omnibodied intelligence. Omnibodied intelligence, and I would imagine then, Deepak, that the open AIs of the world, or even Amazon for that matter, yeah. would have cracked the code over here, right? When this is, when you talk about uh, ReMars, for example, you know, with robotics and, and all of these things that yeah. are picking up nowadays, when AI is really growing by leaps and bounds, isn't this the next frontier that they should have factored in? Yes, uh, and robotics is a frontier which everybody has been trying to factor in for many years, yeah. right? But you will notice one major difference when you think about AI for language, like in case of OpenAI, LLMs or ChatGPT or robotics. What is the difference? Like if I ask you a question, what do you think has been the main reason for all the success behind GPT-like models? What would you say? Any word answer? I would say it's the, it's the data, the, the data, data set. Data, exactly, right? Scale of data. We have internet of data for language or vision. It's all over the internet, right? Where is the internet of robotics? So which means that the basic primary problem of robotics or applying AI to robotics relies on having data which is not existent. So I cannot apply the same recipe. So no matter who you are, how big you are, how many resources you have, everybody starts at ground zero. Right. And that's the beauty. So tell me, so at Skilled AI, you would be training some of these models yeah. on publicly available data on what human videos, how does that work? Yeah, so since there is no data for robots, uh, right, you have to start somewhere to bootstrap the process. So what we do, we focus on two kind of alternate source of data. Mm -hmm. One such source is human videos. Because if you think about humans, we are also robots, we are biological robots. Instead of motors, we have muscles, instead of electrical uh, circuits, we have neurons That's and true. all that, right? And, and, so, the, and the human brain is probably one of the OG supercomputers yeah, out there. Exactly. So we learn by watching humans. Uh, but you can find a lot of lifestyle videos or even egocentric videos. We learn by watching humans and those videos guide how the robot should behave. But by just watching is not enough because if watching was enough, we are here in Switzerland. I could play like Federer, having watched all his games, uh, all these hours. Yeah. You need to practice. And that's where simulation comes into play. So we combine human videos watching with simulation to bootstrap the process to get the robots out there. Very interesting. You know, so, so is there a concern then sometimes that if you are training these data sets, uh, you're training on these sort of publicly available data sets, that there would be some sort of infringement or some sort of 
compromise in terms of yeah. user privacy this sort of third party content does that does that worry you sometimes because i'm going to get to my next point which is agi and, and that's what i'm leading you up to yeah so this is this is a valid concern in many scenarios for instance when you use these generative ai models to generate images or videos because something of from your home might be in the generation of, of these models that's a right concern for those but for robotics we are not generating stuff right it's just you learning by watching like how kids watch their parents do things and then you will find that you will often see your nephew or nieces or carrying anything in the house put to it the side and say they say hello to it it might even be a shoe they don't care what they have seen adults saying hello into something rectangular that's the kind of learning which kind of transpires early in uh, uh, human life which is what we do and for when you use this kind of learning the concern becomes less because you are not really trying to use that data to generate or really copy as it is it's the human movement what we care about the big question in ai about artificial general intelligence and one of your investors jensen says asi maybe artificial super, super intelligence, intelligence right does that concern you a little bit and you know within the larger robotics community when ai becomes that powerful that it sort of uh, outsmarts its human coders and developers and users this is a good question i think uh it's a valid question to have discussion around but the timeline for that is still very far off it's often misunderstood to be very short right i think if you look at like what currently the most advances we have are in the forefront of language models or vision models right but if you look at the human development timeline in the whole evolution we spent billions of years in the physical world yeah like language as we know it is very recent in the timeline of evolution even science or uh, internet is only 100 years old like uh, internet basically right science is maybe 1000 couple of thousand years old like a few thousand years old that's it so in this context which means that physical world is the reason why we even have intelligence yeah and as a community we have not made much progress onto the physical world so in my opinion the timeline for agi or ai why am i pretty optimistic yeah. is still very far away but that does not mean you have to achieve achieve agi yeah. to make impact like ai is having real world impact even today and it will continue to have so but the fears of uh, agi or asi today is still quite early uh, in the process so we still have time to really prepare and i think this is what will be the focus at davos here as well probably you know i just want to build on that point because i hope that's the focus here at davos yeah. because you have all the big tech titans here you have world leaders here deciding what the tech stack is like but are these questions you know genuinely being being raised at the right platforms like davos or maybe some of the top tech conferences around the world agi asi it's a question of timelines but it's also yeah. a question of whether we are getting the right safeguards in place because once the genie is out of the bottle it's not that easy right yeah. deepak so the conversations you're having with some of the big guns who are your investors is this genuinely one topic that features high on the priority list it is uh, but again being a bit realistic uh, right now the way these tools are being used like even if you look at oh, chat gpt has been around out for 3 years in the beginning the fears were like okay in, we have only one year to go then we have only two year to go or this is the year uh, but it's always if you look today it seems like yet another tool which is there to enhance our productivity mm -hmm. like everybody uh, like movies are still being made uh, people is still uh, right content there is still journalism like and it has made everything better uh, uh, to to some extent like but that being said right now i think you have to be very respectful of the timeline so there are discussions happening but sometimes if you were like for one example over here is if you worry about the issue of overpopulation on mars today it will kind of hinder the progress towards that right so we are in that sort of timeline for asi it right. is very far away uh, right we don't even know the right strategies to build to go around this but there are real concerns which are much more realistic and bigger than agi or asi like uh, jobs like uh, many jobs getting automated how do people account for that so these are the issues people i think pay attention to right now more than worrying about uh, the omnipotent ai you know as and you see a lot of the banners and and some of the marketing around here on the main promenade as well and it's nice to see that it's not a side track or just an afterthought in terms of just plugging it in through marketing yep. each and every stall or pavilion or house here talks about 
some of the things you just mentioned, right? Displacement, yep. jobs, the sort of uh, way you want to lead the revolution, the safeguards that are needed in place, the cyber security measures needed as well. Yep. Do you think uh, back home uh, for you in the Bay Area and of course in, in, in Bangalore and across Asia as well, these are encouraging signs that these conversations are being had at a platform like the World Economic Forum with a background <laughs> like this? Yeah. So I would say there is often a, a misunderstanding in these kind of scenarios, right? Like if you look at people talk about job replacement, but if you look at the stats in US, there are about a million more jobs available than people available to fill them, which means there are more jobs. And the retention for uh, workers, uh, blue collar workers is very, very low, right? At the same time, there's a big chunk of people who are unemployed. It doesn't make sense. So on one hand, you have more jobs than people, and on the, on the other hand, you have uh, people unemployed. So what is really happening? It means there are certain kind of jobs that people do not want to do. Yeah. And this gap is only widening. As a, like In today's time, you do not want to be doing a job which causes pre chronic, chronic issues, pain issues in your back, or, or threatening to your life. You want safe, uh, comfortable jobs. But other jobs also have to be done. So that's the gap which AI and robotics is filling. So, and that gets lost in the narrative that there is uh, 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 jobs being replaced. It's mainly the jobs which there is already hard time getting uh, workers for. Is that a narrative you have to deal with often when you're talking to your investors in the Bay Area and also then speaking to your marketing teams, you're now a hundred member. <laughs> it's not really a <laughs> narrative. I would say this is what we actually see. Uh, when we're companies right now, like companies, like, there is huge demand for physical AI. Yeah. And the reason is, the retention, like for jobs which are extremely uh, physical, uh, like uh, strenuous, it's very high, uh, very low retention rate and very, very difficult. So with with skilled AI is robots right now, I know you might not tell us about your customer base. Yeah. We'll use AI to find that out. <laughs> but more importantly, what are the main use cases? In which industries are we seeing maximum demand? Yeah. So in the longer term, our goal is to more go towards more consumer, like home robots. That's where we do most of the research in. But it would be weird if you get a home robot today and you have not seen robots around you, like in hospitals or uh, grocery stores, etc. So what we are doing is we're starting with enterprise applications. So things like uh, in mobility use cases, like point-to-point -point delivery, last mile delivery, uh, inspection, security, that's one area. Manufacturing in warehouses, assembly of items, Data centers is a, is a big use case. There are like a lot of discussions around data centers. Like, uh, and so we are playing a major role. In fact, we are also playing a key role in variety of areas in automation in the American industries right. uh, uh, as well. So this is where we start. We get data from them. And that is then used to bootstrap robots for your home in the future. And plans to go back to your roots as well, maybe deploy some of these solutions in India soon? Definitely. In fact, uh, we are the robot brain company, which means the beauty of that is the hardware can be built in the country in which you are deploying. And with all the Make in India initiatives, this is like the, exactly the kind of scenario, complementary fit, I would say. Uh, you'd, even if there are no uh, big advancement in the model land in India, but the, India has huge uh, potential to be the next hub of uh, robotics manufacturing. Because India has already has a huge number of industries in automotive. Mm -hmm. And you can piggyback on that to lead to the uh, robotics manufacturing. And we do plan to uh, uh, like take benefit of that. Deepak, this is a, one of the most impressive list of investors, right? With NVIDIA, you've got some of the AI guys out there as well. And more importantly, Jeff Bezos has invested in your company. But what I want to understand from you is the billion dollar question, okay. or probably the $14 billion question for you, given that's the valuation of skilled AI at this point. What's next? An IPO is on the cards? Well, at some point in the future, but not immediately. Uh, I think the, the reason is uh, we are in a trajectory where every couple of months, the results we see overpowers what we had uh, like a couple of months before that. So right now, our goal in this year too, is to really focus on two things. One is scaling our models, like uh, we have get that more, way more compute now, so to train bigger models. And second, expand the deployment. Because we have to establish what we call data flywheel. So this goes back to the first question. Since robotics has no data, you have to deploy to get data, yeah. and then use the data to deploy better. And that's what we started in, in last year. We have to just expand that exponentially this year. This is your first time at the World Economic Forum and yep. makes two of us. <laughs> uh, what's your experience been like and, and what are your plans here in Davos? Yeah, so 
I have a bunch of meetings with the uh, world leaders uh, in variety of sectors. The, one of the unique things about here is you can meet technology uh, folks, investment uh, people, as well as policy uh, uh, all at one place. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, that. And maybe some skiing as well. What a pleasure to have you here at the NDTV studio here on Tech360. Deepa Patak, more power to you. Thank you so much.